battle, but this time it's, you feel good in here. Good. Feel real good this time. Thank the Lord. Luke chapter 17. And uh, all of you that were here the first night, we studied about our deciding and our decisions of what uh, we've got to be deciders as never before. We are on the side of the name that has to do with prudence and it has to do with choice. So let's read all together verses 26 and 27. And well, let's read all the way down to this uh, verse 30 to finish the whole thought here. Luke 17, 26 through 30. All together? And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the Son of Man. They did eat and drank, they married, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Amen. Amen. Holy Father, we thank you for your word today and we ask you, Lord, that you would bless it that you would pour out upon us understanding and open our eyes and take away our ignorance, Lord God, and help us see and feel and know and perceive that the time is short for us to get ready for your coming. That the time is short, Lord God, that we, that we get ready, Lord Jesus, to get out of here and also to impress upon us the need and the urgency of making our decisions firm and sure in these last days upon this planet Earth. Holy Father, we bless you and we thank you for your presence and we thank you, Lord, for your word today. Bless it, Lord, to our hearts and give us understanding and we'll give you the honor and the glory for it in your righteous and mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. And it says here, as in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. And we're living in those days. We're living right before the coming of the Lord. And these are days that the Apostle Paul says are dangerous times. We're living in dangerous times. We're living in times when there's gonna, there is already a lot of violence, a lot of wickedness. Lovers, people are lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. People are out, as we were reading the other night, they're out looking for, for the fables. They're looking for, for the untruth. They're looking for the lies. They're looking for the, for the things that will, will fill their, their, their hunger for knowledge. So they, they heap to themselves teachers learning and learning and never coming to an understanding of the knowledge of God or the understanding of the truth. And then later on it says something about them. They, they, they go after fables. They go after things that are not right, that are not true. Why? Because they did not have a love for the truth. They did not have a love for the truth. And who is the truth? The truth is Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And we're going to see in the video tonight that they think that there are many ways. People today think that there are many truths. They say that there's, there are many roads that lead to God. There are many ways that we can get to God. And one of the things we're going to have to do to, in, in, from, from this time forth, from, from these days forth, we're going to have to embrace the, the truth, not a truth. We have to embrace the truth. The truth. There's only one. And I don't care what they teach you in, in your job and in the, in the seminars they'll give at the, at the, at the offices and, and the things they'll be teaching in school. There is only one truth and that truth is Jesus Christ. And we had better fall in love with Jesus Christ enough that we will be willing to lose our lives in these last days. If you don't love Jesus Christ enough to, to stand right now, to stand in, 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 in holiness or to stand in, in righteousness on the, on the job or wherever you're going or, or, or with your friends. If you don't have that enough in you right now, when they come to round you up to take you to a concentration camp or when you, they stand there and, you say, and they say, you take the seal or you die, you will probably take the seal. And if we don't get in our mind that this life is only a tiny drop, it's only a little tiny space, and whatever we're going to go through from now till the end of time, our time here on the earth before the rapture or before our death, that is, that is only a very small bit of time. 
and all of eternity stretches out there. And all of everything, everything that Jesus Christ paid for us on Calvary, that bought us eternity, that bought us our salvation, is going to depend on our choices right now. And in the very near future, when the persecution starts coming hard against the Christians. And it is going to come. It is going to come. We've, uh, I've been sharing things with you. I was talking to a, a brother that I've never met, but I've talked to him over the phone that's into all of this. He's not in our church. And, and he, he, he knows about lots of things. And he's confirming the things that they're saying on these videos and in, in these tapes and that, that you hear on the radio. The time is growing short. And then the... the, the the clouds of confusion are coming over the minds of the people so that they say there are many roads and the one road isn't like it used to be. God changes. God changes His Word. You don't have to shout. You don't have to dance. You don't have to be holy. You don't have to, you don't have to be a, 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 you know, a, a, what, what's the word? A, a real... A holy roller. You don't have to be one of those that, that from the old times. They're telling you that. They're telling you that. That we learned. Let, let me just let me just say this, and then I'll go on to, to the theme for today. Really, well, this is the theme. <laughs> but years ago, Sister Hicks taught us when she taught about there's a, there's a series of tapes called Worlds in Collision about thoughts and about speech, and it is it has been proven even scientifically that the words that we speak go on and on and on and on. We set into motion waves, sound waves. So whatever's being spoken out in a voodoo camp right now, those waves are coming into the air. Whatever's being spoken in the New Age centers today, it's in the air. Whatever is coming forth out of the, out of the lies of, of uh, Wall Street, all of, the, all of the, the, big, uh, the big ones, the Illuminati and whatever's being done out there, it's in the air today. And whether we are in those groups or near those groups, we are being bombarded by these lies. We are being hit by this every day, every day, every day, every day. And we have got to, we have got to embrace the truth. We have got to embrace this Bible, the Word here, and say there is no other truth outside of Jesus Christ. Hey, there is no other truth outside of His Ten Commandments. There is no other truth outside of this. And if I have to die for that, I'm going to die for that because that is the truth. And, 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 and you all are looking at things that, that aren't really right. You are the ones that are mixed up. They're going to tell us we're the ones that are mixed up. But they're the ones that are mixed up. And they will mix you up. They will try to mix me up. And if I'm not sure what's written in this Holy Word, and if I haven't defended it day and night against the thoughts, against the feelings against the spirits that come after me day after day, I will not be able to stand in front of a principal at school or a teacher or a, or a boyfriend or, or a, a, a girlfriend or, or a, 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 an uncle or an aunt that say, you don't have to believe that. That's not right. You don't have to understand that way. You do it this way and this way. Everybody's going to be the same. Everybody. There's nothing. If you, can't, if you can't stand for the truth right now, then you will not stand in that day. Hear me, hear me, hear me. And our battle right now is in the mind. Later on it's going to be more in the mind, more in the soul, and then we might have battles in our physical being also. You understand me? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Are you willing to die for Jesus Christ? For people. He laid down His life for us. He laid down His life for us. Sister Hicks said recently, that we all should read Fox's Book of Martyrs all over again. In other words, she's saying, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And if we get all settled down in all of our pleasure, our love of pleasure, we're just like this. They did eat. They drank. They married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. All of these people are shouting, it's coming. The end is coming. The Lord's going to come for His people. The rapture is here. The persecution's coming. There's going to be judgment on the earth. It's coming, it's coming. Oh no, I, get, I have to go over here and I have to run over there and, and I have to have my pleasure and I have to have my, the things I want. I want to be satisfied with the things that I want. And they, and, and, and they just close their ears. They just close their ears. I, have a, I, I, I know of a situation just very, very recently 
for a second time. Uh, it was confirmed that this person's trying to close her ears to the truth that there is coming a time that we're going to have to pay a price. To pay a price. How much do you love Jesus Christ? How much do you love Jesus Christ? With everything, hopefully. And once again, whatever comes, whatever comes, whatever comes, God will give us the grace. You read the Fox's Book of Martyrs and, the, and he, many of them were, were burned at the stake and they didn't even feel the flames because God gave them grace at that moment. And they went out singing the hymns. They went out praising God while the flames were lapping up at them. Because eternity, eternity is forever. This life is only for a moment. Hey! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Brother King is willing to die. Brother, Brother Bruce was willing to die. Brother Duns was willing to die in the past for this nation, for the United States. Are you willing to die for Jesus Christ? Are you willing to die to Jesus, for Jesus Christ? How many are willing to die for Jesus Christ? Really? 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 Willing to die? Willing to give your all for Him? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. What was the sin? The basic, basic sin here? In the time of, of Lot, what was the sin? Likewise, as in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. <laughs> Idols, what idols? <laughs> what idols? Pleasure, prosperity. In both of these, it's talking of prosperity. And underlying this prosperity are what types of sins? Greed, fornication, adultery, lust, idolatry. The root of all evil is the love of money, the love of reward. I'm going to reward myself with food. I'm going to reward myself with another TV. I'm going to reward myself with a, with a, with a retreat out in the mountains. I'm going to reward myself with this. I'm going to reward myself with that. The root of all evil is the ingratitude. And when Rome fell, Rome was full of prosperity. Rome was full of power. Rome was full of, of every, every uh, full of money. And yet they started crumbling from the inside. They started crumbling down in their souls. And what is what is happening today? So not only are there spirits of greed, spirits of prosperity, spirits of, of delusion like we saw the other day, but there are tremendous spirits of fornication and adultery that are coming out on the world today and bombarding every person that walks on this planet Earth. Hey! Hallelujah. And there can be spiritual adultery and there can be natural adultery. There can be, there can be physical, physical fornication and there can be spiritual fornication. And you can say, well, Dr. Calkins is going to talk to, to uh, uh, Ernesto. <laughs> going to talk to Ernesto because he's young and he's handsome and he's Latin American and he's single. <laughs> So she's talking to him that he not fall into those sins. And one of these girls over here could say, well, she's talking to me because I'm young and I've got a boyfriend. And Well, I am talking to you and I am talking to him, but I'm also talking to all of us. Everybody, 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 everybody. I'm talking to the pastors. They're not safe. They're in one of the most dangerous positions there is because those sex spirits those, those perverted spirits. What was the problem in the days of Lot? Perversion. perversion. Why did God destroy the old world? Because of perversion. perversion. It was so wicked. So wicked God could not stand to let them live. He had to kill everything because the sexual sins had invaded the plants and the animals and the people that were upon the face of the earth. Everything had to die. Everything had to die. Why? Because man wanted pleasure. And they search for pleasure here. And they search for pleasure there. And pleasure here. And when this pleasure didn't satisfy, then they went for another pleasure. And then they went for another pleasure. And the world we're in right now is a sex-sick world. Amen. I have said it. I have said it. I have said it. 
And, and, and it, it, it's just all over, all over. Uh, diapers are sold with a, with a woman up there with n hardly anything on. Cigarettes are sold. Pop is sold. Uh, cereals. Everything is sold with sex. Sex, 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 sex. And if you open that door in these last days, if you do not stand for the truth of Jesus Christ, and you need ev every one of us, I include myself, we need to ask God to open our eyes. We need to ask God to give us spiritual eyes to see what is going on around us, to see where it's coming in. It could be, it could be that the, the it could be the most ugly girl in the office that's coming up and just kind of walking by you just a little bit too close. And ah, she's ugly. I don't have to worry about her, huh? But what about those big guys that we saw the other night that are hanging around her? That are going to come over and they're going to start working on, on, on you. They're going to start working on your heart and your mind. Tearing down the truth. Tearing down the truth. Tearing down the truth. And, and we, we're, we're, I'm talking about physical right now, but also in the spiritual. We have one God. We have one Lord. We have one King. So we can't look at, we can't look at the single people here and say, well, they're the ones that are the problems. <laughs> uh -huh. All of us are being hit one way or the other. Leave your Lord and serve another Lord. Leave your Lord and serve another Lord. Leave your Lord, your Lord Keith, and go serve another Lord. And the, and the confusion comes and the, and the wickedness comes in. And before you know it, you are all wrapped up. And I, w I had a case uh, um, a while back and you're gone before you know it. Because these are powerful spirits. Powerful spirits. And the spirits of perversion... Don't think that you're safe from them. Don't think that you're safe from them. You, can, you get a friend that's a lesbian or you get a friend that's a homosexual and before you know it, you start kind of thinking, well, there's really maybe nothing wrong with it. There's, there, you know, it could be okay. And We're to love those people, but we're to pull them out of their sin and to make them walk in the righteousness and the justice of the Lord Jesus Christ. So all around us, we are being bombarded with tremendous, horrible things that are coming against us. Horrible things, antichrist spirits, sex spirits, prosperity spirits, and all of the darkness and evil of those days where, where everything was just was so bad, so bad that God had to destroy everything. It's not quite that bad yet, but that's where we're headed. That's where we're headed. And in those days of, not, of Lot and of Noah, there were people that stood. There were people that stood for God's truth. In the days of Noah, there were only... How many? In the days of Noah, how many escaped? Hmm? Eight. Noah, his wife, and his three sons and their wives were the only ones that God could say they're clean enough to pull out of the judgment so that my seed can go on through. And that's about the way it's going to be in these last days. We're a small group here. We're a small group here. Trying to reach the bride. Trying to get up there. And we've got to keep ourselves clean. Clean in our thought life. Are you willing to die for Jesus Christ? Are you willing to die for Jesus Christ? Are you willing to die to those sexual impulses? Are you willing to die to those perverted thoughts? Are you willing to die... To the, to, the, to the wiggly, wiggly feel goods when she walks by? Are you willing to die for that? Or are you going to kind of pet it a little bit over here where you don't see and nobody else sees? Are you willing to die for that? When you die for that, then you're going to die for Jesus Christ. And when it really comes down to giving your life, you'll be willing to die for that. Are you willing to kill the, the spirit of prosperity? And, and God wants us to have what we have need of. I mean, all of us could use a little bit more, right? But, it, but it's this greed thing, this, this I, I, I want my pleasure, I want my pleasure, I want my pleasure, I want my pleasure. Don't tell me to, to wait in line because I want to have the pleasure of getting through this line real fast. It's this, this give me, give me, give me, I'm the middle of the world thing. Are we willing to die for that? Die to that? So Jesus Christ can stand up inside of us with the humility and the simple, the simplicity? Are we willing to do that? Yeah. Now? The simple things in life. And that's what I was trying to get across Saturday. 
that we're going to have to start standing for the truth now. Now. Or we will be turned over to the unrighteousness because these spirits are too big for us now. We cannot play around with them. We cannot, we cannot coddle them. We can't, we can't pet them. We've got to get rid of them. We've got to get them out of our lives. We've got to get, we've got to get firm with them or they will pull us under one way or the other way. Amen? Amen? Amen, amen? Let's go to Genesis. What was the problem with Sodom? Sexual perversion. Sexual perversion. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. And it says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they bare children unto them, the same became mighty men. And the word mighty means powerful, warrior, tyrant. Uh, they were the mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. And we're getting close to that. These thought waves are coming out against us. They're coming out against us. The evil people that are being fed by the television, that are being fed by the pornography, that are being fed by, by all of the, the, the sexual movies and all of the, all of the violence and the, and the, and the corruption. These, this wickedness is being shot out all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. And as we get closer to the end, there's more evil people that have died and their spirits are coming out on the face of the earth. And they're evil spirits and they're going to try to get into us and try to, try to corrupt us and bring us down. Is this clear? Wickedness. Wickedness. Look up the word wickedness. See what it means. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great and that the imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. I want to get down. I, I just don't have time. I'm trying to summarize a whole lot here. But you all, I think, are getting the point. You've got to get down into your thought life. What do you think about in the midnight hour? What do you feed on when it's just you all by yourself? Is it, is it, is it, is it the sexual side? Are you fantasizing about some handsome man that you want to go to the beach with someday and marry? Is it some, is it whatever it is? Is it, is it, pardon? I want to. <laughs> We, we've got to get cleaned up in the inside, in the, in the wickedness of our imagination. And that's our midnight will that Sister Hicks has been talking about. That's where those cocoons have been stored for all of these years. And we grew up thinking, okay, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong. We got converted one day and all of a sudden we found out that God doesn't like it. But we've got those things already settled down inside. Amen? Be it a woman or be it a man, we've got those things. But we have a Redeemer that can clean us up and can get these things out of us. So that all we will be conscious of when that trumpet sounds is the voice of the Lord our God. The holiness of the truth of Jesus Christ. The righteousness of, of what He is. And we can control our thoughts. We can control, control our thoughts. When that first thought comes up, maybe that one you can't. It's like, like Sister, uh, um, Sister Hicks or Brother McKay or one of them said, the first time you look at the woman... You can't help that because she walks by. She's talk, she was talking to the men that time. But she said, but when you, when you look the second time, that you can help. Okay? And so it's the same thing with these thoughts inside. When these things come up inside, when it comes up, it's come up. Okay? But then immediately, you can say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I've got adultery down in my heart. You said it in your word and you're showing it to me right now. God, get this ugly thing out. I don't want it. Thank you for your blood. I put your blood on it. I put the... Hey! 
I put the fire of the Holy Ghost on it. I put the waters of your name, death and life down on it. Clean me out. Clean me out. Clean me out. Sometime we're going to study. We're going to study Ezekiel 8. You can study it at home. But um, Ezekiel went into the temple and he dug a hole and he climbed inside. And God said, look what's on the walls of the imaginations. I'm right on track then. <laughs> Look what's on the inside of the minds and the hearts. And a lot of these things, we, we, we've inherited them. They've come, when we came down through this loin and that loin and that loin and that loin and that loin, we, we picked up these things. But we're living in a time when we've got to get rid of them if we're going to make the bride. And we've got to get rid of a lot of it if we're going to make the rapture or we won't even make the rapture. Because we're going to be so so consumed with this thing. We already have it. And if we open the door by not having the blood on us, by not having the, the Spirit of God flow through us in holy praise and, 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 and worship, then those big guys that we talked about the other day that are bringing down Christiana Christianity, those are going to jump on and feed these things even more and even more and even more. The young people today need to understand abstinence, abstinence, abstinence. The married people need to defend their marriage at all costs. Husband and wife need to pray together. Husband and wife need to stomp adultery spirits. Husband and wife need to push back fornication and perversion. Call it, hey, 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Looks like your knee's doing good now. Hallelujah. You need to. You must. You must. You must. You put the kids to bed and then you get out there and you say, Husband, let's push all of this back. I love you. I, I love you. I am yours. I belong to nobody else. Husband, pray for me. And the husband says the same to her. And he says, I am yours. You pray for me. And you get hold of your husband. And your husband gets hold of you. And you push it back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you plead the blood one on the other. You plead the blood on him. And he pleads the blood on you. And, and, you, and you lift up the name over him. He lifts up the name over you. You're not at the job with him. You don't see all of the officers or the women. or, Okay? And then the young people get together. And pray for each other. Amen. Sister, I don't want you falling into sin. Sister, I don't want you going into that. Help us. Help us. Help us. And you pray. You get hold of Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And you hold up and lift up the name of Jesus Christ under the power. And you get in your family if you don't have anybody else to pray for. And you pray for Ernesto and pray off the spirits that are getting on him. Because they are getting on him. And you pray for, for your sister. And... and, and and you pray for, for Patricia. And Papa prays for all of them. And you say, well, Papa doesn't need any prayer. Uh-uh. Papa doesn't need any prayer. Uh-uh. No, his wife's just in another country and he's all by himself. He doesn't need any prayer. He needs a double portion of prayer. His two children need to pray for Papa. It doesn't matter how old you are. doesn't matter how ugly you are. doesn't matter how fat you are. doesn't matter how... how yeah, you idiot you are. <laughs> Those spirits are going to find some way to sneak in and get down in your soul and destroy the holiness that God has called us to be. And He's called us to be a holy, holy bride. And then poor, poor um, Gloria says, well, who do I pray with? <laughs> Everybody plays for Gloria. <laughs> You get with you get with you get with Patricia, and you get with Sister, Sister over here, Kim, and you push back, and you push back. I can't think of any names right now. You push them back, and Sister Veronica over there, her husband's not here a lot of times, but she's got family, and you can get around her and pray for her, and you can push back what's getting on her husband because it's getting on her. either perversion or sex in the natural or idolatry and adultery. Sister Hicks has a book called Idolatry and Adultery. The twin sins. The twin sins. And you can be bowing down to some idol money, 
career, whatever it is. And it's still getting on you. And it's sin is sin. It doesn't matter if it's a physical sin, a mental sin, or an emotional sin. It is still sin. And we need help in these last days. We need help. We must get help in these last days. Is that clear? And I was talking to somebody just recently that we need, we must stay in a fellowship. We must. I was talking to this person. They're not going to a fellowship. We must stay in a fellowship precisely for this reason. Because, because number one, 24 hours a day we're being bombarded by this. The wickedness today is just as bad. And it will get worse because God in the days of Noah did not end up everything. But everything's lining up for the Antichrist. The man of sin to come on the scene. And so we're fighting devils they didn't have to fight. We're fighting their devils plus Sodom and Gomorrah's devils plus Babylon devils plus Roman devils plus Egyptian devils plus all the other devils. We've got a bunch that are coming against us. We need to stay together. And when we're not in a reunion like this, then we need, you need to pray for your husband, for your wife, for your children. You need to push these back. And pray for those that, that, that aren't even there. That, that your husband or wife that might be working at that time. Pray for them and push those back because they will try to bring us down in these last days. And don't think, well, well I, have a, I have a beautiful wife and I love her so much. I don't have to worry about those things over there. Huh? Oh, my husband, he's, he's fine. I love him so much and we have two beautiful children. Nothing's going to happen to me. You all are military people. If you don't have any guards out on the hill, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? They're going to take you out real fast. Real fast. You're military. There are no guards around when the war's going on. What's going to happen? They'll take you out. Just like that. Why do we think the devil's so dumb that he's going to stand back when we don't have our, web, our, our, our eyes open? We need to ask God, show me. Show me. Where idolatry, fornication, adultery, and perversion is trying to get into my life in these last days. Because these spirits are bombarding every last one of us. They're bombarding these. Why, why are the children today so more rebellious than they were 20 years ago? Why? Because they, these things are going right into them. Right into them. These spirits, these thoughts, these, these, these vibrations from all of these things that we've been seeing today. Amen? How many will stand for Jesus Christ? How many? How many will stand for Him? As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. And Enoch walked with God. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. And Enoch lived in the midst of this wickedness. And God took him. God took him. Why? Because he could stand in the midst of such horrible wickedness. Read on down in chapter 6. It says wickedness and violence and, and horrendous things that the people were doing on the face of the earth at that time. Let's just read it real, real quick. Chapter 6. In verse, verse 9 it says that Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. But then on verse 11 it says the earth also was corrupt before the God and the earth was filled with violence and God looked upon the earth and behold it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth all flesh and God said unto Noah the end of all flesh has come before me for the earth is filled with violence through them and behold I will destroy them with the earth and here's Enoch and here's Noah standing for the truth. And they got out. And they got out. We can get out too. We're a small group, but we can get out. Every one of us here in this room, we can get out. 
when the when the old ship of Zion comes over to take us home, we can all get out. We can all get out. But what did it say of Noah? He was just. He was perfect. He was clean. He was holy. It didn't matter what was coming on him. As if I could have somebody here and put all types of black and, and ugly and mud and, and things over him. And he stays holy. And in W-H-O-L-L-Y, holy in contact with his Lord and with his God. Hallelujah. We can stand. We can stand. And it's going to be easier to give our lives than to stand against the spiritual onslaught. You hear me? It's going to be easier to die than to stand against the mental and spiritual onslaught that we're already feeling. It would be a lot easier, just go ahead and shoot me and get, get me out of here, than to stand there and say, I resist, I resist, I resist, I resist, I resist, I resist. And we've got to start practicing now. Amen? 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 How many are on the Lord's side? How many are on the Lord's side? How many of you are willing to do that and start screaming out, open my eyes. Open my eyes to see the enemy. Open my eyes to see the fornication. Open my eyes, not to judge that person, but to guard our camp. To guard this temple that God has given us in this life for His glory and for His honor. To keep this thing clean and not let anything come in the back gate when I'm not on guard. Ask the Lord to open your eyes to open your ears to hear, hey, that's a lie. That's twisted. That's not right. Ask God to open your ears to a word. And not just the word, but the spirit that comes with that word that's going to come in. Somebody could say, just say, hello, brother. But they could say it in such a way. Hello, brother. And if you, if you don't have your ears open, you say, oh, hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> Before you know it, you're gone. It's all gone. It's all gone. You're, you've fallen. Ask him for ears. Ask him for sensitivity. Brother, uh, Brother McIlvaney, uh, on one of the tapes, he said we've got to ask God to start making us sensitive to his spirit. We've got to ask God to start making us sensitive to his spirit so that if God says turn right, we turn right. If he says walk this way, we walk that way. Because it's going to be our survival in the last days. You all won't have a pastor near you sometimes. And you'll have to know where to go and where not to go and what to say and who to talk to and who not to talk to. We've got to get that sensitivity. And how are we going to get it? By starting now against the bombarding spirits that are coming against us to take us down right now. Amen? Amen? Amen. So I'm going to draw a line. Who's on the Lord's side? Who's going to stand for Jesus? Hallelujah. Who's going to stand for Jesus in the schools? You're going to stand in the schools? In California, of all places. <laughs> in all places. At the job? Your friends? At the base? Will you stand for Jesus? Will you stand in the market? When you're standing there looking at these magazines as you check out? Will you stand for the truth? Will you stand for the truth? Or when you walk through 7-Eleven and you see Playboy or something over there, are you just going to kind of, oh, yes, Lord, help me. Or are you going to stand for the truth? You might see the outside might have just, you know, a woman in a suit, but you're thinking, well, I wonder what's on the middle page. I've never looked at Playboy, but they say the middle fold is one of the best places. Who's on the Lord's side? Let's stand up. And everybody that's on the Lord's side, come forward. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna start asking God to open our eyes, open our hearts, our minds, to give us spiritual discernment. And more than that, I'm going to anoint you all, and I'm going to be praying for that, but I'm going to be praying also for a spiritual backbone that you will stand up against every one of these spirits that are coming in this way to fight against you. Get with your husband. Everybody get with your husband and wife. We're going to pray that way. Amen? Lift up your voice.